There we go. Welcome back. So, um, it was noticed about four months ago that some people um, are doing whatever it takes to stay on the leaderboard. Um, and suggestions were made, and these are actually pretty reasonable suggestions. Um, they just aren't uh, completely entirely informed about what's going on. So basically, people are staying atop the top 10 leaderboard by just playing a game for like a day or a week against somebody like hundreds of points lower rated than themselves. And um, yeah, this leads to, I don't know, people staying atop the leaderboard and just basically not playing the game. Um, and it's not really in the spirit of, well, I don't know. I kind of object to the leaderboard in any case, so I don't really care. But on the other hand, if there's a problem with the rating system, then I do care. And here we are. Somebody finally noticed it. Um, and I've been trying to figure out how to address this, and uh, we'll get to that in a second. I didn't think there was a easy way to do it, but now I'm more optimistic than I used to be. Um, so... Yeah, so there was a suggestion that was kind of complicated by playing opponents way weaker. You could end up with a growing rating deviation until you reach 110, and then you have a question mark. Um, and, and honestly, this is how it should happen. Um, if a person's playing against um, bad opponents, their rating deviation should gradually increase until they're playing against people more uh, at their level. Well, no, the rating deviation should increase with time. Technically, it increases with each rating period, but there's only one rating period, apparently, at Lee Chess. Uh, there's, I've not seen the end of a rating period and the beginning of another rating period. Not even sure how that would work, um, since there aren't scheduled tournaments that happen um, within the scheduling time frame of a month or a week or a day or something. Um, but yeah, the rating deviation should decay back to the initial value, and we'll get to that. Um, so uh, this uh, theory is entirely correct. And he says, okay, but this would take a huge amount of time for a player to decay back to 110 rating deviation. And now he observes that in four months of inactivity, his rating deviations only increased from 62 to 63. This would indicate that it would stay below 110 for many years, especially if he plays a player to keep his rating active. He's right that a player who hasn't played in forever um, is going to see that their rating deviation is... Um, well, basically unchanging. And that's because the way it's coded on Lee Chess isn't actually Glico 2. Um, so we put in a measure, a countermeasure, to cap volatility to 0.1 because otherwise volatility was exploding to, like hundreds. Um, and fine, but uh, I guess that's okay. Again, that depends on the definition of a rating period, but I don't think volatility is used for calculations anyway, for calculating anything other than volatility. Um, well, no, that's wrong. Um, yeah, no, it's used to help calculate... Um, I forget. I should remember this. I don't. The concept is, like, how many standard deviations... Um, should a, uh, well, this is interesting, anyway. But yeah, how many standard deviations, um, does this rating tend to deviate within a rating period so that we can properly update the rating deviation during that step? But, one thing we're still missing, okay, so my point of pointing this out was that this highlights in the code where you would go to have to make a change that affects the entire rating system. Um, 
it would be this glico.scala as well as perf.scala. Um, you'd have to apply a uh, function on your rating at the time that you're doing add. Um, again, I'm not sure why add. Uh, this is what had me confused forever ago, but um, I have to do something similar to this for rating deviation and we'll be good. So let me try. In fact, yeah, I'm in the midst of this change. Get diff shows what I'm up to. So I took this part of the code where we did the thing for volatility and changed it um, to put in something that should have been in place a while ago too, is that there should be an upper ceiling to the rating deviation. It should be 350. It didn't really matter in the case of Leech S because there was nothing that increases, basically nothing that increases the rating deviation. I've never seen it increase, ever. Um, no matter how inactive you are. And that means that we've had to put in additional coding to help manage the leaderboard based on who's playing games, rather than based on the rating deviation. And it's best to just fix the root cause problem than try to add additional layers of complexity and to fix uh, the side effects of the side effects of the side effects of, and you get the idea. So, yeah. Let me. So I verified that I was able to put this code in place. Um, I executed a SVT compile, which is how Scala knows to take your current project or environment um, and compile your source code. And it basically checks for syntax errors too. I mean, it does everything you have to do to compile the code. Um, my main point is that I use this technique it's helped me verify that I haven't done something terrifically stupid, so um, so much so that it won't even compile. And then once I've got an approach that actually compiles the code, which this should do, um, then uh, actually, so let's go back here. Uh, we're already calling this function cap over here. I'm changing the definition of cap to modify the rating deviation at the same time that we modify the volatility. If we want to call it something other than cap, I would suggest we rename it. However, or maybe I'm going to change some chain some functions together. Um, one to do capping, one to do aging. I guess, yeah, I'm going to define another function age. So we'll say g.age.cap is going to be what we do. And it's going to have to, oh, oh, hang on, we got a date time here. I was wondering where the hell I'm just going to find that. Um, so, wait, no, this is the time of the current game. Uh, so I could subtract. Um, assuming I have a value in here, assuming latest is equal to a value. Um, yeah. Okay, I got it. Or I could pass this in. Uh, I'm surprised that date... Oh, date.sum takes this value and turns it into an option. I think. Um, I have to double check the legend here about how it is that Leela does silly things. Because there's some things that you're supposed... that you could do in a very verbose way. But Leela Leechus has a much um, easier way, or a much uh, more succinct way of describing. So, yeah, 42.sum takes 42 and turns it into an option. Uh, so what this means to me is that um, I don't need to do date.sum, I would just need to, this is a date, not an option of a date. So I would do g dot age with parameter of this date. Um, and then, okay, let's grab this. Let's grab this declaration. Oh, this doesn't in fact compile. Does not in fact compile. So I have done something stupid. Um, and we see max deviation here. 
Wait. Where why is that not initialized? Like max volatility is initialized, right? And that's that's defined in the same scope down here. And this is initialized to 0.1d. Um How is it that initialization is performed? <sighs> yeah, yeah, unbelievable. Um, okay, so yeah, it's only defined in the same file. Reference to uninitialized value max deviation. Oh, I'm sorry, that is a different context. Um, I got a little too ambitious. Well, damn. Um, right. What this means is that I have to take um, max deviation and stick it up here. Um, otherwise, I won't be able to use it with the default. Or I could take the default and put it down here. Oops that. Which is probably a little bit cleaner. Um, yeah, I have confidence in that working. Alright, and so uh, so I was going to copy that declaration, and I did. The main point was that um, we don't need to reference a glico here, but we do need to have a date time. I'm going to call this age. And we're going to say this is equal to copy deviation equals deviation. Again, all I'm trying to do here is put in an interface, or trying to expose a function, um, and make sure that the syntax checks out with the Scala syntax, because I'm not intimately familiar with Scala. Um, and the cap was defined in, or utilized in perf.scala. So we're going to say g.agedate.cap. Um, so the next question is oh, wait, we've got recent, but that's a list of int. That's not a date of last update. Um, is recent a list? I mean, that's a list of points. Um, okay, well, doesn't matter. Inside my rating, I have visibility to the old date value. Let's make sure this compiles again and fixes the other comp. Compilation warning. I keep stuttering because I'm unsure whether I'm going to go with my initial thought, which was compilation warning, or if I'm going to try to break this down into um, easier to understand terms like a compiler warning. Um, I think you guys can understand uh, the language in either event. You would understand that a compiler is what does compilation, even if compilation's like a 12, 13, whatever letter word. Um, so yeah, he's absolutely correct that rating deviation is not increasing at the moment. This will change soon. Uh, hopefully if I get this fixed, it will change with the next release. So let's take a look at glico.scala. Let's view the entire file, if we may. Um, unless like GitHub or DNS provider that's not good. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to have to go into my router um, and see what I can do to fix that. Oh, wait. But I don't want to fix this unless the stream drops, because the stream's still active. It's just my DNS, which is effed. Um, Still, I should look and see, am I using Google Public DNS or am I not? No, I'm using my ISP's DNS, which is the problem. Um, let's try refresh. 
DNS couldn't be found. All right, uh, we're going to go to plan B here, which is go to our network devices, um, change adapter options, go to my ethernet, uh, TCP IP4, preferred DNS server is gonna be Google public DNS for the purposes of this stream. 8888, 8844, okay, apply. There we go. Um, so we're back. Uh, I'm not gonna go bounce my whole network just for that. And hopefully I'll remember to come back later on and say I don't wanna send all my DNS requests through Google. Um, but yeah, we're back. So what I'm looking at here, <laughs> okay, is fun stuff. We'll just say that. Um, I forgot what I was going to go look at in this file. I was going to see, do I have visibility to um, the date uh, of the previous game? That should be an aspect somehow of this given that um, we were seeing, what was it that we were seeing? Let's go to new tab. Date time is being used for purposes of setting latest equal to something. Uh, latest is getting written as LA. It's a date time value. At least I think it's still a date time. Um, it's performances. Is this the same as Glico? I'm sorry, is this the same as... I don't know. Oh, wait, wait. So... <sighs> yeah, latest is exposed here. However, when we construct a Glico object, we're not passing latest into that construct, and, and we need to be. Um, because even though for the rating formula itself, that's date agnostic, at, well, at the moment it's date agnostic, because it's driven by rating deviation, it's driven by... Um, driven by volatility and driven by the rating estimate itself. Um, oh, type date time not found. Okay, well that's no big deal. Um, but yeah, when we... Uh, in order to fix this, um, let's first import the right thing. Um, this is glico.scala, right? So what this means is that when we construct one of these, we're going to actually need to pass in not just the deviation, but the latest as a date time. Um, arguably that's, um, well that's fine. Uh, <laughs> and I guess this is not actually, well I mean, Uh, fudge. I think this has to be an option date time, which is gonna suck. Um, but, yeah, some existing player records don't have that value set, so it's gonna be an optional value. Um, and then we're gonna have to say how to apply aging based on the latest. Um, oh, yeah, we're working on fixing the rating system um, because uh, Tipo, or however you pronounce this, um, correctly noted four months ago that 
it takes a long time for rating deviations to increase. And I wasn't sure what to do with the code base. And now he's saying, no, seriously, rating deviations, like, never go up. They never decay back toward 350. And this is unlike every other chess server. Well, it's unlike chess servers which use Glico ratings. It's unlike any other server which does Glico ratings, where rating deviation actually decays over time. That's the whole point of using Glico instead of ELO, basically. I mean, there are some other benefits to using Glico instead of ELO, but it's by far the largest benefit, and Lee Chess is not benefiting from its correct implementation because it's not correctly implemented. So. Um, between the forum post and between looking at the code here, um, committed because some other thing was discovered to be wrong because we're not doing ratings right in the first place. Um, yeah, what we're doing is trying to stabilize this and make sure ratings, rating deviations decay so the leaderboards can correctly be generated, and it's just a mess. Um, so, basically, this means that when we apply caps to a rating, we're also going to have to age the rating based on what was the latest time of a game and what is um, the date that we are... Um, <laughs> I don't know. So my thought is to take like date minus latest, um, which is only going to work in the case where latest is actually defined. And otherwise, I don't know. Um, can I say like latest dot full date or something? I don't know how to do deal with optionals in. Um, I guess we'll figure it out. So let's go check out the wiki again and Leela isms and see like how do I say use this value or fold it with a different value if it's not set. Oh, maybe int. Question, question, f. Okay. Um, yeah, there is an optional type. Uh, it's called option. Um, and Lee Chess uses this all over the place. Um, so, I think this is the correct syntax for folding. Is question, question, F would be equivalent to fold zero and then execute function. Although, curiously, this is what is amazing. Oh, okay, this is saying don't fold on the value, but fold across the function, like, if we don't have a value, don't apply the function, just return this value. Um, I'm sorry, this value being the default. I don't even know where it gets zero from. Um, oh, okay, I would use this pipe operator. This would be sufficient. Just saying use the value or use this if in the value where the optional is not set. Um, but honestly, I'd rather not do aging at all if we don't have a date set. Um, so I'm looking for something more like this. Um, I am confused that, like, I, I assume this comment is in fact incorrect, where if uh, 42 dot sum is actually equal to nil or null or whatever the undefined value is. I'd assume that the default that you'd get returned would not be zero but actually null. Um, I don't know. Um, So, well, I'm going to write something in the most verbose way, saying x has value, else um, just return the old value. So here's how we're going to do that. 
we're gonna say um, latest has value. How's this written? Oh, has wait has value? Just literally the word value? That can't be right. Oh, this is a contains operator. Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, fine. Uh, this should be okay. Date minus, and we'll say latest or date. Um, age the rating deviation unless there is no previous unless um, latest is null. Um, or null is incorrect but empty. Because date minus date will evaluate to zero. The cleanest way to cleanest answer would be just deviation equals deviation and then if latest has a value um, that would be a thing. Oh wait, I've got this tab open twice. That's special. Um, but yeah, there's no way to check if null on an option. Unless I I guess I could look into scale of Z and see how options are implemented, but whatever. I guess the larger point here is that this latest value should never ever be empty, but sometimes I guess it is. Um, in theory, latest should never be empty. Um, well, no, that's untrue. Yeah, no, actually, because uh, I have a cap in place to cap us at 350. Um, yeah, I just have to say, like, new date. Or however you say now. Um, which is going to have to be borrowed from date time. Rep date time across this. Yeah, where do we say now? How can I get now? You perf. Uh, date time. Is there a way to get like today, now, something? Date dot sum. Date. Date. Um, okay, um, that's weird. It's provided from some other source. Rep wr date time across the entire code base, or rather across all the modules. Um, oh, date time dot now. Okay, great. Perfect. See, when we construct one of these, instead of saying new date time, we'll just use the existing library function. Um, uh, which should never occur. But might, but should never occur. All right, so clear get diff shows what we've changed we're importing date time changing the interface of glico which i believe is only consumed by perf uh, adding a new function age which accepts an argument of the date and time of the game that we're attempting to rate with uh, versus um the latest uh this should actually since there's the rating refund program uh, which is lovely. Um, 
we're going to have to I don't know something here we want this duration in days uh, just gonna be fun but also this needs to be um, this expression bounded by zero No, not max zero, min zero. Um, so, since rating deviations, um, use um, um, however for rating refunds, um, do not negatively age the rating. Well, actually, you might want to do that. You know what? Screw it. Rating refunds are not my problem. And it should probably work anyway. Um, because, yeah, if we're refunding a rating, we should also attempt to refund the rating deviation. And so... Um... How would that work? Well, no. No, that wouldn't actually work because negative aging would decrease the rating deviation at the same time that we're increasing the points, which is just wrong. Um, um, but better would be, in fact, say um, for rating refunds um, negative aging should increase the rating deviation um, there we go hence the absolute value in there not that we should be doing refunds anyway. I could put a comment that rating refunds are a terrible idea, but that's not code related and would probably make it more difficult for this code to be accepted. So, um, okay, have I forgotten anything? Um, I don't think I've forgotten anything. I think this is okay. Um, it's funny that we have min rating and then we've got rating ceiling of 4,000 here. Um, honestly, well, never mind. Uh, huh. I'd be tempted to put a ceiling of 4,000 inside the rating itself, but what you gonna do? Um, so I think we're good. Once this is in place, later on we'll have to tune parameters server side to make sure that ratings, um, well, okay, no, actually I needed to get that duration in days. So I don't know how to do that. That's the other part of what's been tripping me up. It's like, okay, I can subtract two durations from each other or two date times from each other. Um, scale a date time difference in days. Um, sure. Oh, okay. Cool. There's a hours thing for hours between. Um, hey, if this gives us... Actually... Um, <laughs> get date time one whatever whatever um, there's no factory method applies so we need to create new to create a period um, 
Hey, if this compiles, then we'll worry about what to do about it. I'm still at the point where um, I don't have confidence in things compiling. Um, all right, date one and date two. Hours but well, yeah, hours between... I don't know that it matters what order I do these in. Date, um, latest, or date. That'll, that looks fine. And then we probably want, instead of hours, we want days. But, um, I first just want to make sure, do I even have the right library installed? that this is valid. Uh, clear SPT compile. Um, I'll try to check out um, standard way to work with dates and times. Um, <laughs> yeah, Joda, uh, wait, Java date and calendar libraries are inadequate. Joda time is great. That's good. Um, subtracting a date time from a date time. It's done by the period formatter. Okay, I'm glad I found that hours. Oh, days between. Even better. Even better. I was going to guess, but I did not know. Okay, so what do we have here? Type mismatch. Oh, we've got an option of date time. But wait. Option of date time with that or operator should have returned a date. That should not return an optional. Um... Okay, type mismatch. Oh, I'm sorry. I see. It. It's barking about what I did at line 59 there, um, which is wrong. That um, date time dot now. Uh, I have to do date time dot now dot sum because this has to be an option, an optional value. Um, all right, and then. Yeah, days, days between. That's what I was searching the internet for, and we did find. Um, and then we'll worry about the appropriate formatting for those. Um, let's see, not enough arguments for method apply. Oh, uh, this is a perf.scale line 31. Right, so we need to set r dot latest here as well. Um, sanity check option. Add. Oh, this is where we say add. Um, <laughs> oh, we actually do have the date in there already too. Okay, so that's cool. Let's give this another whirl. Um, I was actually concerned um, that piece of code that I just added was the missing link that I was worried about throughout this entire process here. That when I instantiate a Glico object for purposes of doing a calculation based on performance, performance being the table, well, the collection in the Scala uh, database. Um, so when I get each performance out of the database, um, we're going to do some math or some calculus and stuff with um, all the my rating versus my opponent's rating, etc. Um, at that time, uh, we're going to need to instantiate Glico type objects out of the performance type objects just because that's how um, LeechS does it. it introduces this extra layer of abstraction 
And now when we're constructing that Glico object, we're passing in all the parameters we need to pass in, which is great. Um, oh, that's a mess. That's a mess and a half. Um, wow. Okay. Latest is not a member of a third-party library class. <sighs> okay. Um, right, of course that wouldn't be. Um, but that was my concern. Um, we've got, like, we've got rating, deviation, and volatility. But nowhere in here do we have a date representing the last rating date. Um, so we can't extract that from the Glico object. We're in trouble. Um, uh, gosh darn it, this is why... Um, this is why I like to offer suggestions instead of actually coding them. Because I don't know where to get this date out of the this environment. Obviously, I can't get it out of the rating. Date here, I believe, is the... <clears throat> um, rating here doesn't have date. I don't know if date here, which conveniently has no javadoc to explain it, it does not tell me whether this is the date of the game that we're playing right now, or is this the date of, um, uh, this has got to be the date that, of the game that's being played. That being the case, um, we need another date here. Okay, this is going to change tons of interfaces. And, um, oops, changing a read-only file, but whatever. Oh dear. Alright, so I'm changing this interface. Just going to break everything. Um, So we're updating this Glico based on a different... Wait, no. No, 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 no. Well... Update recent with G. Okay, what does update recent with do? Um, this isn't actually a Glico calculation. So I don't need to augment the structure. I can just use date here. Uh, should probably rename this to latest. Oh, but in Scala, you can't rename variables with also, without also changing the context in which um, they're utilized. So date it remains for now. Um, we know update recent with um, new glico. Okay, so new glico here we're like doing a refund, but where the heck do we um, actually do a rating calculation? Presumably in none of this. I'm going to be so fortunate if I don't have to touch, like, tons of interfaces just to get this implemented. So, I'm optimistic so far. Yeah, I think this is all abstracted away from the rating calculator. Um, so, there's, in the database, there's performances, or P-E-R-F, I think is the name of the collection. 
which contain um, rate values that are used to construct this construct called a rating. Then from a rating, this code builds a third party object called a glico. Well, no, I'm sorry, it builds a, this is still a Leela object called a glico. This glico in turn is used by the rating calculator. Um, I, I am losing my mind here. No, okay, so the rating calculator uses an object of type rating. Uh, native to Leela, we have a analogous type Glico, which does not extend rating. Probably should, but doesn't. But that's okay. Um, and so when we construct a Glico, we need to have all the attributes of the rating, but we also need to have the date and time of the last game. Um, what's tripping me up here is that I don't know in what order all these things are called. So I don't know like if I have to pass in additional contextual information or not. We got a list of numerous recent ratings, but we don't have anywhere in here. Well, no, we do have the latest, but I think I added that argument. Jeez. Um, okay. Wait, no, be because I added this argument up here, did I need to add this? Um, where are we, am I even using latest? I think I'm probably using it incorrectly. Um, get diff performance. What have I changed here? I'm breaking everything. Um, no, latest was already part of that interface. Um, okay, and so we're here we're going to do similar to what we do elsewhere where we say latest uh, or date. Um, <clears throat> but that in turn means that when you construct a Glico object that it does have a, it always has a date set. And we're going to verify this by compiling the code. Um, but this should mean that um, date time is not optional for Glico types, because Glico is different from performance, which is different from rating. For some reason, we've got all the appropriate abstractions already in place, so we shouldn't need to do now.sum, we can just say now, um, which in turn means that over here we don't need to do stuff that's already done in the other class, uh, which, um, like clear, get diff, oh, which in turn means I can update my comment. Um, so where I say unless latest is empty, um, yeah, it, we should understand that age, age is the rating, um, for rating refunds, get the absolute value, um, Well, no, no, we can't just restore the rating deviation, but it should somehow uh, increase the rating deviation when we're doing a rating refund. Um, so I guess now we compile this and just see how badly it breaks. Um, how bad a job did I do? SBT compile. Um, so days between is a function. We know that now. Forum is still there. Leela isms are still here. Uh, 
I don't have multiple tabs of Boutly Lisms open anymore like I used to have open. Um, hopefully it compiles. If it compiles, then ship it. <laughs> no, I need to test it out, but very likely this will succeed if it only compiles which is quite the hurdle, let's be honest. Um, Scala can be used as a better Java or as a worse Haskell. Definitely goes for the latter. Uh, it makes little use of object orientation and particularly inheritance. However, immutability, immutability is required everywhere and strong typing is preferred. Finite duration is better than int and um, name is better than string. This rule is loosely respected in Leela, but that's the correct direction we're going to. That's actually not valid English, but whatever. Does this compile? Um, abs. <laughs> Alright, so not enough arguments for apply. Latest. Oh, okay, so we need to, whoops, not highlight the entire line there, but um, Actually, I don't need to change directory at all to edit the file. That was a little extra step I was taking unnecessarily. Um, ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So glickos are actually read and written... <sighs> Jeez. Was I not reading... No, performances. Performances have this date time attribute. Glickos apparently do not. <sighs> okay. So this is nullable after all, even though it shouldn't be. I should have known that from looking at. I am losing my mind trying to figure out the difference between a performance, a glicko, and a rating. Ratings are not Leela constructs, so those are separate. Don't need to worry about those. Glickos apparently are read and written um, in the database. Um, however, the Glicko does not contain the latest date. So we'd have to get that out of the performance object. Um, that's okay, I guess. But that in turn suggests that my entire orientation is probably wrong. That when I'm saying to age a rating, um, I need not one date here, but two. Because um, apparently latest should not be an attribute of a rating. Because that's not the orientation that another developer settled upon, so I shouldn't start inheriting that orientation. Um, so this should be um, latest option date and time date date time which in turn means that in perf.scala um, where we say age uh, we're going to say dot age down here. You need to also pass in the latest value. Um, which, incidentally, is not the same as latest down here. Latest in this scope is actually the same as the latest that's declared up here. That's only at time that we do add that latest is redefined. Um, but I was told by a wise developer here that Scala requires immutability. So what we're doing here is not mutating latest, but changing it to reference a different date after we've already... Okay, well... My odds, my bet is this is not going to work very well. 
Um, I should probably, since we're passing in G, um, oh wait, 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 so, G is something we're passing into this instance method or function. Um, G are all the new values that we're wanting to pass in. Um, right, these are all new values. We're applying both of these are new values. Latest here is the old value that we still want to utilize. Um, I guess I don't need to say this dot latest, but man, it is so tempting to say this dot latest here. But we'll be succinct. Um, okay, abs not found. Well, perhaps it should work out a bit more. Um, grip abs in modules. I'm pretty sure I just say for math import abs or import math dot abs. Yeah. Import math dot. Let's grab that. And then edit um, this file, I think. Um, okay, I actually want an example, don't I? So let's take a look at statistics. Apparently my mouse is triple clicking when I need to double click. Um, okay, so math is the first thing that we import above all else. Since it's, I guess it's a native Java library, it makes sense to import it first, I guess. Um, Alright, compile again. How'd I do? How close am I this time? Let's find out. It's not done yet. How about now? <clears throat> all right. Days between with alternatives. How? What else have I messed up? All right. When I construct one of these, I no longer need so many arguments. Um, um, yeah. So glycos do not have a latest date. Um, but also. Overloaded method days between with alternative days and days um, cannot be applied to option Dota date time. Oh, wait. Did I say that this was optional? I did. Um, that's the problem. This is at line 40, where I say days between using latest, but latest is an optional value. Um, all right, take 35 action. Um, but yeah, we think we're making progress here, in spite of myself. Um, I have looked at the rating code before, so I'm not just completely doing this blind. Um, on the other hand, I don't know. Let's see, what do we got? 
What do we got? Um, <laughs> sequences F1 and F2, then run effects. Okay, so I think we've got a strong enough hold on Leela-isms. We don't need to focus on that anymore. Oh, really? Do I need to say that Days Between actually returns a number? <laughs> Wait, Days Between does not return an integer. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to have to look up this data type and see how to downscale it to an integer. Um, show to time days int give me an int give me an okay get days gets the number of days that's all we wanted didn't really care um, right, line 40 days between this get days is the correct function name um, there we go compile again <sighs> at least in this we're not forced to add any unnecessary parentheses for like no argument methods <gasps> um, you're not have to add semicolons, you're not having to add a lot of things that you'd have to add in Java. So I'm not having to routinely um, struggle with that kind of syntactic stuff. I mean, yes, there's a lot of syntax, and um, there's a lot of strong typing, and um, a lot of details for me to worry about here. But... Um, I guess the beauty of this is that if it compiles, there's a stronger guarantee that it'll work. So, it's not quite as good as Haskell. Um, so I've heard from multiple developers, and I'm sure is the case. Like, Thibaut has repeatedly mentioned like how great Haskell is. And, um... Uh, I'm gonna take him at his word for that. <laughs> Uh, what do we have here? Reference to uninitialized value default. Glico.scala. Okay. What's broken this time? Default. Uh, oh, right. So my point was that all these maximum, etc., should go up there. Default int rating should go down there. Um, yeah, apparently location of, uh, I'm sorry, the ordering of text in a file still matters. This isn't, um, I've seen some kind of language. I think it was the classroom object-oriented language for which I wrote the working, uh, beginnings of a compiler. Um, I think it was that language in which it didn't matter how you specified or in what ordering you specified things in a file. Or I might be thinking of a VHDL. I could be mistaken. In any event, um, ordering does matter in Scala. Yeah! Good, cool. <laughs> yeah. Do you, how far did you get with the compiler construction stuff? We got all the way to, like, building the syntax tree and discussing concepts of memory allocation. We didn't actually fully flesh out all the allocation, and uh, but you get the idea of what a compiler has to do in terms of writing code, writing a binary, assembling a binary, um, using that machine-specific architecture, or some set of instructions, um, uh, are capable of managing the memory of the application. Yeah. Yeah. I don't blame you for being in the backlog. So check this out. Success! It compiles! Get diff. Um, get diff modules. Rating. So 
So the shows that I added. Oh, so I said I was going to code golf. This, um, if this compiled, then I'm worried about um, doing the imports in the correct way. Well, it compiled, so now I have to hold myself to that. Which means um, the appropriate way to do this is uh, like this or something. I don't remember. I'm sure the compiler will let me know if I messed up. But we were looking at a different file earlier that showed an example of how to do a multi-state or multi-element import. Yeah, you package name dot, and then the way we're formatting it here is with spaces between the braces and commas between the elements. And yeah, there we go. Um, all right, so hopefully this still compiles. Okay, you want to make a course to teach Zug about Java's underworking, or about parsing in general. Um, dude, you could make like an entire degree about teaching that, I suppose. Um, uh, okay, parsing in general. Um, okay, that's an interesting thought. Yeah, um, I have an interesting idea about how to approach that sort of thing. Well, I guess it wouldn't be very course-like. It would be more of a, just a fun project that people could use somehow. I mean, okay, people have compilers. Compilers will show you if you have syntax errors and spit out error messages if you do. Um... Hmm. A couple thoughts occurred to me. One is that um, forever ago, Google released Parsi McParseface, the language specification for English, along with their program that um, can take a sentence um, and parse it. Um, so one thought would be that you could specify a grammar. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of ways you could specify grammars. You could you don't have to use this, um, but that it'd be interesting to try that uh, in a programming context rather than in a um, uh, English context and see how well it does at analyzing that. Uh, but another thought occurred to me, and I thought at some point somebody would written tools to help generate code. Um, I forget the specifics. I'll have to see if I can remember what that was about. But I think there's supposed to be some way to... I don't know. To... what was it? Details actually matter quite a bit here. Um, let's let that run while I ponder. Uh, thinking some yeah just to make a simple file format parser oh <laughs> yeah yeah um, the more I think about this um, I'm trying to come up with an analogy to explain why this seems like a futile exercise um, Okay, uh, I guess that that's the one thing that we have going for it is that um, um, that it, it could interest somebody by virtue of the fact that they're somehow interested in formatting stuff, but aren't actually interested in the theory behind how things work. Um, a language server for Java, so you can hook it into Emacs for auto-completion syntax, etc. Instead of using IntelliJ. Um, again, like, yes, this is a noble goal in some sense. There is some value to it, but it seems to be missing the larger point that Java is not a great language. Um, or, 
Um, in the case of parsing and database formats and such, um, it's just you could lead um, a horse to water, but you can't make it drink sort of thing. Okay, that's interesting. GitHub Java Parser. Somebody actually bothered um, for lexical preservation. That's cool. Java 9 Parser, an abstract syntax tree for Java. Um, reads the code structure. Um, I might actually use that for work, just to tell people how effed up our code base is, and give us a metric of that. That's pretty cool. Okay, one second here. Sorry to move the mic. Um, seeing other things going on in my Stockfish project at the moment. Um, ah. Okay, so I'm being asked to check the slowdown due to anti-quiets being in place. Um, Alright, so we're going to accept um, various tweaks to constants all across the code base for Crazy House. Crazy House just got a whole ton smarter, by the way, um, in Stockfish because I fixed a algorithmic or um, yeah algorithmic thing that was not doing what it really should have been doing, um, and uh, many constants needed to be tuned anyway that hadn't been tuned in a while since a number of upstream changes were merged. All right, so lexical preservation means pretty printing. Take it to the logical extreme. Every node of the AST describes. Yeah, that makes sense. So you could create some beautiful dev tools. Um, here, let me log into my site without having to put my password on screen. Uh, one sec. Oh, actually, yeah, one sec. Okay, so we're back here. Um, so I think I'm going to play a rated game against AI level 1. Note that the AI isn't actually... Well, my server used to let you play, and my... No, currently does not, because I'm not running my special version of the code. Um, but I could still play a game against anyone. Um, so... I guess I'm going to open a separate tab and play against myself in a rated game. It's going to be fun-ish, maybe. 5-3. Alright, we're seeking 5-3. Um, I'm going to open up another tab, navigate to the server, hopefully get a distinct token or session or whatever. AI level 1. There we go, let's play some Blitz. Uh, we're not getting paired. Uh, I'm not sure why I'm not getting paired. That's pretty weird. Okay, fine. So we'll create a game. 5-5. Five, five, rated. Um, random color. Oh, my, my little style here doesn't show that. Um, here, let's see, can I challenge myself to standard real-time 5.5 five rated? Oh, AI level 1 can't challenge me to a rated game 
because my preferences are set to ignore challenges from people who aren't rated similar to Lee to myself. <laughs> that explains it. Um, okay. Game behavior. Um, oh, you can do click, click, drag a piece, or either. Did not know about that. Learn something every day. Um, mm, privacy? Allow anyone to challenge me. And then we go back to the quick pairing pool. Let's see, does it actually pair us this time? Probably not. I'm curious though, can I get this to pair me against the AI? Or against my alter ego, we'll say. I don't think so. Probably because AI level 1 has the same preference for privacy to... No, it doesn't. Um, Alright, but we're still going to see, like, navigate to other players, challenge, challenge to a game, real time, 5-5, five, five, rated. There we go. There's our notification. I said rated, though. This this is not rated. Um, okay, so I'm going to challenge you to 5-5 five, five standard rated. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, f oh, this is actually a classical game. Beautiful. Um, and so we'll try not to lose this too badly. Just kidding. Um, and, okay, that's rated. So I didn't break that aspect of ratings. Uh, now how the hell do you test the remainder of this? The remainder being, okay, I can still rate a game. Great. Um, yeah, I don't know how to test this other than just the fact that we've got, uh, that it's in Scala, and it compiles. Um, and I think that's as good as I can get with this. Um, well, no. Well, shoot. I had it right there. Um, oh man. And we don't see in this log anywhere, like, this is the old reading deviation, this is the new rating deviation. Um, I had it. I was right there. I blew it. Um, and what I mean by that is that I can actually see from player ratings what's the last... T what's their RD. Like, I can see what's AI level 2's RD versus AI level 1's RD. And if there's a difference there, um, then I think I've succeeded at my aim. Let's open up a new... Oops. Let's open up a new browser. Um, again. Just out of it's down. Yeah, so what I need to do for my test is take a rating, look at the rating deviation, play a rated game, because it's been many months since I've last played a rated game on this instance, verify that the RD increases. That's the test plan. That's what I should have done. Uh, I was not thinking clearly. So I'll have to redo the test, but at least now I have a plan. All I was just testing is that I hadn't broken rating completely, but now I need to verify that I'm seeing a, a reasonable result. Um, now, as f the other thing I could look into is how much should the aging actually age? Glico 2. We're going to take a look at... Welcome to Glico Ratings. Glico
Quick O2 rating system, example of the system. Um, oh, system constant, which constrains the change in volatility over time. That's for a volatility. Um, yeah, well, where's the step where we say increase the RD? Um, age? Nope. Alright, so I'm going to have to actually look at this. Look at determine rating an RD at the onset of the rating period. The tau constrains the volatility of time. Smaller values, tau prevent volatility changes. Uh, the application of Glico 2 is expected to involve improbable collection of game outcomes. Then it should be set as small as 0.2. Um, use the player's most reading, recent rating RD and volatility. So this is an example of how to use um, Glico, but this doesn't say where to find uh, how RD actually decays. Um, so where do I find the actual decay for RD? Uh, uh -huh. Example. No, I don't need an example. I need the actual document that says. Um, <laughs> fine. So we'll go with Glico 1 and see, like, how does Glico 1 specify the, how the RD changes? Use the player's rating from the last period and calculate the new RD by the formula. RD is equal to minimum RD squared plus C squared, 350. Okay. Rating deviation squared plus C squared, where C is a constant that governs the increase in uncertainty between rating periods. C below for discussion for the choice of C. All right. Um, I don't suppose the rating calculator actually has that value. Um, AI level 1 is going to log in, and um, let's see, is AI level 1 provisional or classical? It is. It has a rating deviation of 346, but I can't see what the old value was. Um, yeah, so I guess before I destroy my test data too badly, um, I should get a better understanding of how to choose the value of C and or whether our code base actually has such a value somewhere. The value C used at step 1B can be determined by optimizing predictive accuracy of future games. Um, cited in a different paper, another approach is not computationally intensive is determine how much time would need to pass before a rating for a typical player became as uncertain as that of an unrated player. To determine the calculation for this approach, suppose that player, typical player has an RD of 50, rating periods last two months, and that let's assume five years would pass before they become provisional again. Um, or as unreliable as an unrated player's rating this would mean a time that would pass for me to be 30 rating periods. Um, if 1B were carried out, we solve for C, C would be 63.2. One practical problem for the Glico system is that when a player competes very frequently, their rating stops changing appreciably, which reflects that RD is small. This may prevent a player's rating from changing substantively when the player is truly improving. So we'd recommend that an RD never drop below a given threshold, such as 30. Um, that's an interesting point, too. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, this Glico 2 improves upon that, and makes that not so necessary. But this calculation is something I can implement. RD squared plus C squared times time where C is some constant. Um, uh, 
All right, so 350 is equal to the typical player's RD squared plus C squared times time, and solve for C. Um, let me try to actually implement something analogous to that. But also check, is there such a thing? Um, CCD here, grep WR tau here. Um, okay, default tau is 0.75. Uh, <laughs> convergence tolerance multiplier. Multiplier, yep, that's given in the formula. Um, so this doesn't actually contain the decay constant. This just contains the tau constraint. Um, so the actual decay with each rating period is done externally and is in no way um, no way done by the calculator. Okay, what else is there in this Java Glico 2 thing? View uh, Java Glico 2 star.java. So there's a calculator, there's a rating, which nowhere in here, yeah, doesn't say the aging. Uh, rating period results, again, um, no constant there. Points for a win, loss, and a draw are pretty well defined. Okay, so nothing there. Um, certainly, if there were something about aging in this code base, I would have seen it already. Um, so what this means, yeah, instead of using days between, um, we need to say, well, Let's import more things for math here, because we'll use them. Uh, how? Um, all right, so we're going to use. Um, oh, we're also going to need square root. Just for, even though square root is just um, a power with a fractional exponent, square root is easier read that way. Um, Okay, so is equal to square root of pow deviation two plus um, c squared times abs, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we don't actually need to. <laughs> um, all right, so where do am I going to define C squared? Max deviation. Um, I don't know. Maybe we just use provisional deviation over 2 or something. Um, plus pow this over 2, comma 2. We'll just say that that's reasonable as anything to use here. Um, Somebody has a better constant or choice of C, by all means, um, provide it. But um, now there's something here about doubling or having a thing. Int prove, okay. So, yeah, we're going to say. Int, int deviate or um, yeah, 
val provisional deviation halved equals provisional deviation over two. Um, just so this is like a little bit less math that we have to do. Um, whatever. I don't care if it's an integer or a double type. Um, <laughs> I should actually give this a name. This is actually going to be C, and he's going to hate me for this, but um, C is the name of that variable in the paper. So, And then I guess we define a rating period as being daily. I guess. So, in practical terms, what's this going to mean? If the player hasn't played in a day, generally speaking, um, this is probably it's probably too much. probably much too much. Let me think about this. So if I've got a rating deviation of 80 and well let's just assume that we're not doing any of the square root or power or any of that. And we're just adding a literal C every period and a period is a day. Then yeah we're adding a ton to that rating deviation every day. It's probably a bit too much. Um, so I should see like is well yeah I don't want actually months between. I want like days between. Get days over 30. We'll say that 30 is the duration. Or I guess in the paper it's saying that a dura um a reading period was 60 days. Oh. Yeah, I want to initially set this to something pretty high and then we can, well, no, I want to set this to something that's useful. Um, I think a 30-day rating period is okay. Um, having uh, just pick that number out of a hat, honestly. Okay, what was the number offered in the paper? That's 63.2. Would be appropriate if you had a two month period. So 63 is the number that we want to gain every rating deviation, I'm sorry, every rating period. You more or less add that to the rating deviation. Um, yeah, I think this is okay. Um, how much to decay, um, let's see, value, um, days per period, um, equals 30.
how much to decay the RD over a rating period. Um, over a pseudo, because there is no actual rating period. Well, whatever, we don't care. Um, uh, to age the RD over a rating period. Um, even better. That's getting to the point. Um, so we're going to age this over the period. Um, um, RD um, RD new is equal to square root of um, RD old plus um, C squared times T. for n rating periods. Well, let's put the correct parentheses in this and maybe somebody can make sense of it. Um, wait, now what was t here? T in this formula was the number of rating periods. Did I read that correctly? Step 1b. C squared. C is a constant. Um, so if I read this correctly, you'd apply this formula T times over T rating periods, but that's functionally equivalent to, oh, I'm sorry, that's, you can estimate it this way. Um, good enough. Let me think. No, this is equivalent, which is perfect. So days per period is actually just going to be a decimal there. Uh, let's see. Which in turn means this should be a decimal value, which is going to well, hopefully not mess with anything, but we'll see. Okay, deviation is equal to square root of power deviation, etc., etc. Um, Okay. Um, <laughs> so the next question. Well, there's got to be a cleaner way to write this that separates out how many rating periods are there to apply versus. Um, what's the actual formula for the aging. Um, yeah, so def periods date actually latest uh, date time 
this is this can still use option date time. Um, date of type date time. Let's just actually copy this whole line of code. Define periods. Returning an int. Um, is equal to. Wait, did I not just say I'm going to copy this line of code and then I didn't do that? Um, equal to um, that expression. Now, how do I specify the return type of a scala function? Just, yeah, colon, and then data type is equal to value. So if I want to be sure that this is returning, I mean, this has got to return a double, but, um, or a decimal, or whatever it is. So, you know, forget that. So aging and capping the rating are two different concepts. I think that'll do it. Um, so I think this is ready for testing. Um, wait, periods. This is going to be periods of latest versus date. SPT compile. If this compiles, it'll be a miracle, but it'd be nice if this compiles first try. And then we could get to the testing. So, yeah, hopefully that's a reasonable estimate to say that every 30 day period, a player should gain. Um, that they're a player's inactive, they should gain like 25 ish um, uh, rating deviation. Meaning that a player who's active at 50 rating deviation does not play for, um, let's say, 350 minus 50 is uh, 300, divide 300 by that. Um, We'll say by 25. We'll estimate that 110 over 4 is 25. Uh, so a player would have to be inactive for about 10 months to be about as uncertain as somebody who had never played. Um, which is not perfect. Um, oops. Um, <laughs> it's right. I had goofed. Line 40. Okay, let's compile this. And really, um, periods should not be, well, I'm trying to think of how to express this. It's not actually a member of um, Glico per se. 
it's not having to be an instance function because all this is doing is it's just a static helper function. It's a utility function that all it does is accept values and return a value and does not in any way like return a rating or apply a rating or something. Um, so this should be a static uh, utility function, but I don't know how to do that here. So I, it technically has visibility to things it probably shouldn't have, but I don't know how to separate this out without breaking the code. Um, maybe there's a better place to locate that periods function than where I put it. Where I put it seems to be in an instance scope. Um, really, maybe there's something somewhere in that same file that I could put um, a different version of it. I don't know. Um, let's take a look, only because if we're going to submit this, um, we should try to make it accurate, I guess. Abstract class result. Um, just meaning you can't instantiate a result. <clears throat> so, yeah, I don't see a way to make a static um, function. Um, are static in modules include only scala files um, yeah so I don't know what's the right way to do static stuff um, static helper method um, I don't know let's just take a look at one static thing and see like yeah I don't see any way to define static functions in Scala that's okay um, so unless some brilliant idea occurs to me here like moving the code around and seeing if it still works because um, here we have object glico here we've got case class glico um, well, okay, but this is not an abstract class, this is instantiable. Um, so you've got this helper function, where do we put this? What's a good place to put it? Uh, Scala, static, Class function. Why doesn't scale I have? S oh, okay. It's all about the objects or the instances. Statics don't belong to an object. They can't be inherited. Yeah, this breaks everything. Basically, they're a hack. Um. So, what's an appropriate pattern? Um. Alright, helper function, uh, like, that's not good either. Yeah, I just wanted to find a helper function. Okay, so the, you always have visibility to things that you might not... From an OOP perspective, you might not deserve visibility to, but you have them anyway. Um, so the other thing I've seen in Scala uh, is this keyword called sealed. What is a sealed trait? 
can only be extended in the same file as its declaration. Hit OK. Um, function visibility. Singleton. Um, that might be it. I mean, it, well, I'm looking for a way. Uh, it's not an object. It's like. Well, I guess a singleton would suffice. I could create a calculator of some sort that knows how to do aging. Um, that might be the right OOP approach. Um, okay, denoted using the word object instead of... Oh, that's the difference between object and class. They aren't associated with an individual instance of a class. They're noted with the keyword object. So here we've got like case object glico. So yeah, I guess if I had some generic function, <clears throat> um, that would belong down here. So, that would be something like that. Yeah, whatever. There's no sense repeating myself there. Yeah, okay, I can still use def to define functions there. Look at the note for Java programmers. Okay. Um, note for Java. Oops, I'm typoing all over the place. Static is, yeah, right, right. That's exactly what uh, we're seeing inside um, the Stack Overflow response. But this goes a little bit further. It says, fortunately, um, Java programmers frequently define static members, perhaps private, as implementation aids for the instance members. These two move to the companion. A common pattern is to import the companion objects members in the class. Um, class x import x. Dot. Okay. Oh, so I'd have to do like an import statement if I choose to like not make this visible or something, which I'm not doing, but. Um, yeah, right now I don't have any import statement. Code probably still compiles, but the right abstraction is there. That object apparently... <laughs> oh man, this is crazy. Um, but fine. Object is not instantiable, which is like completely backwards from how I think about this in whatever. It works though. And this allows me to separate. Um, these are, this is a utility sort of function versus this is, um, uh, what is it? This is me actually implementing aging. Um, using having visibility to some of the members that are already up here like deviation uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I guess from a purist perspective well no these these implement copy this actually returns a glico, or sorry, it returns a rating. No, this returns a glico instance. Whereas this down here is not returning a glico instance. This is just a utility that, um, this has very little to do with the instance itself. 
This is just a methodology for calculating how many periods have elapsed since... Um, well, now that we've got this here, we don't... Yeah, whatever. It's good enough. 30 days for a rating period seems reasonable. Um, sure. Yeah, I guess I don't need to be that thoroughly verbose here. Um, and honestly, well, no, I'll, I'll be verbose because maybe somebody will actually go and create a configuration setting for days per rating period, as they could create configuration settings for all these things. Um, but they might do it for this. I don't know. Um, so... Yeah, I think an aging of 110 over uh, divide by 4, divide by 5, or divide by some constant is the appropriate amount to age for a period. Um, I guess to be super extra thorough about it, I could look at um, the fix implementation which I have visibility to. It just occurred to me um, that I've got the fix source code more or less. Um, and so we've got like this is the Capablanca, um, which was derived from fix more or less. Um, uh, okay, so this is the help file, but how is it decaying over time? Like, what's our estimate? Click our ratings, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but, um... Alright, we'll just look for the letter C, because that's the name of the constant. No, uh, C is a numerical constant. Yeah, but what is the constant? It's somewhere in the code. Um, I should just search the entire code base for the letter C. Um, no, that's not going to help. Glico. Ratings, finger, Glico. Oh, ratings.c. Constants for Glico system. GD, GV is equal to 0.187 squared over 60. Um, okay. 0.187 seems to be the value that they're going for. I'm not sure why, but that seems to work well for them. Um, GV. Um, mm -hmm. Linear formula. Okay, log form. What? what? Logarithm? Why are you... Okay, at least the comment explains that the value they're going for is 0.187 squared over 2, over a 60-day period, or squared, yeah, okay, whatever. So, over here, if I want to have a value that's like 0.187, um, squared over 60. I don't know. They have completely lost me at this point. GD uh, squared squared times log of 1 plus t over 60. This is similar. S squared plus GD squared times log of t plus 1 over 60. Why would you do log of t plus 1 over 60. For a 60-day rating period, I don't get it.
if we're recursively applying this formula, why would we use anything other than the estimate provided by Glickman? Why, why is there the log here? Okay, if t is equal to 59, I don't know. I think whoever coded this was drunk, which makes sense because it's a chess server. Um, but yeah, uh, what were they going for? 1.483. One point four eight three squared per rating period. So over a sixty day ish period, this log would return one basically. One point four eight three squared would be the amount to increase the rating deviation. Um Which is like nothing. So we're saying over two months, we're going to increment this RD value by like, I don't know, three. That's much... I, I think without the log there, it would make better sense. If you just said like T over 60, that's sufficient. Um... Whoever did this, I wonder, is there anywhere in the world a correct implementation of Glico? Or do they all cite Mark Glickman as the expert and not actually implement it? Because um, Glickman's theory stuff is excellent. It's just, uh, it takes effort to set this up right. And whatever. I'm setting it up right for the first time in recorded history. And it's not going so well. Let me think about this. So why is there this square root in the formula? We see that we're saying take the rating, or take the deviation, square it. Take that constant, square it, and multiply by the number of periods. Why do we not do a literal sum? How is it better to do a sum of squares and then square root it? Um, what's the shape of that curve? Well, okay, let's get Wolfram Alpha out. Wolfram um, Alpha. Save us Wolfram Alpha, you're our only hope. Um, square root of x squared plus 100. What does this look like? Um, right, so what's the, okay, a hundred times y, um, do I get a 3D plot? Okay, I do. So this is apparently... Um, the real dimension of that, I, why is this better than anything else? I couldn't tell you. As opposed to just, um, x plus a hundred times y, or ten times y. Um, 
compare to that. Um, x plus 10 times y has a coloring here. No, this is x plus 10 y. So that looks much, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I guess that makes sense. This is the way that would shade. Um, I don't get the difference. Why is there this extra step? I guess if I take the derivative, well, the derivative is what I see in the, no, it's not. Um, yeah, if I derive this with respect to y, um, what I end up with? <clears throat> I end up with um, x squared plus c, or no, x squared plus, um, yeah. So th the fact that the time dimension, I don't know, the time dimension is uh, not squared or anything. It seems to make this a little bit silly to do it this way. So for, I mean, let's instead of x say rd squared and put c here. And see, like, can it label these axes a little bit better? No, not really. I'm sorry, times t for the time dimension. Can it do t for a time dimension, or do I have to actually say y? Um, so I got some plots. Um, I guess this has a shape that bends for all values of x. Um, how do I constrain this? For um, x greater than 0. Um, for t is greater than 0. So yeah, this is the shape we end up with. Um, I guess the point is that if you're close to zero, your RD increases faster than otherwise. Um, like if your rating deviation is already up at 300, it's not going to jump to 330 next month. I, ha I realized that at the beginning of my coding here. I had just forgotten it through this entire session, which is just dragged on and on because there's so many details to get right. Um, so the, the big question here is what value of C to use? And I did reach out to all the Lee Chess developers asking what to do. Did not get any practical advice whatsoever, so it falls squarely on my shoulders to figure this out, which is ridiculous, but um, make, gives me the flexibility to do what I want. Um, so, how long would it take to get from a player um, who's at, um, who's established at 110 uh, to get back up to the maximum deviation as good as unknown? That's the question that we're asking here. And we want to solve for C such that 350 is equal to, or this is the case, would be 110 squared plus C squared times 30. Um, so we're going to say solve because uh, I don't feel like solving this. Uh, 350 is equal to square root of um, 
110 times 110 plus C times C times um, how many months do we want to estimate? 30 rating periods, which would be 60 months. 60 months, in my case, would be 60 rating periods because I'm not doing it by monthly rating period. Um, so the solution is plus or minus 4 times the square root of 115. Approximate form would be 42. 42 seems like a good value as any. Um, actually, I should make Scala solve this based on the values of the parameters above. Uh, so I'm going to need this in the form of an equation, unfortunately. Um, so. So this is going to be, I don't know, we'll say y times y this is solve for x equals that. Um, okay. So this is the correct form of the thing. Um, this does solve for x, which is the square root of c squared minus y squared over the square root of 60. Um, that's how I'm going to express it. Uh, so c squared would be, um, OK, that makes sense, square root of max deviation, I'm sorry, we want to put a pow here, to minus pow of provisional deviation to uh, divided by the square root of 60. Yeah. how to solve that equation for x. Um, well, um, well, I want to put 60 as a constant. Months. Well, no, no, no. Um, well, months or periods um, to four. Um, uh, okay, whatever. And I don't need to make sixty a separate constant. I will cite the paper. Turbine, how much? To, yeah, this is the expression. Um, C 
60 months. Typical player to become as uncertain as that of a rated player. Um, all right, so I've gone way over column 80 in this code, which um, Typical player we need to pass before a rating for typical player becomes um, as uncertain as that of an unrated player. Let's see. Oh, okay. No, whatever. It's fine. The derivation is clear. So all that remains is to finally test the freaking thing and hope it works still. Um, which it might not. And if it doesn't, that's okay. We'll eventually get there. Before a... Um, It's not provisional. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is actually going to need to be provisional deviation over two would be the typical player. Um, with rd of, um, yeah, that's fine. That's as reasonable as estimate as we can hope to get and achieve um, while making the code still somewhat readable. Um, uh, 60 months would need to pass. Uh, rating periods for a rating for a typical player becomes as uncertain as that of an unrated player. How far did I go over column 80 here? Oh, we just barely hit column 80. Okay, we're good. as good as we can hope to get, I think. Compile. I should make compl a alternate spelling for compile. Or I should find a way to fix, um, I don't know, my shell so that it corrects spelling errors. Use a more advanced shell like Z shell or something. Um, 
So yeah, thanks to Wolfram Alpha for rearranging the terms because I was too lazy to do it. Um, I could have done this. It'll just take all the manual effort of... I mean, we could show the step-by-step -step proof. So we... Oh, go pro now. Yeah, screw that. The, the way you solve this is you square both sides, then take the 60 over, subtract y squared from both sides, and take the square root, and you end up with this result. That's how you get it. Um, it's not that hard. So we're still not compiled yet. Um, Wolfram Alpha did help us out quite a bit. If only because I had a brain fart. Alright, so get status, get add modules rating, clear, spt run dash v. So, we had a player here that has a blitz rating of 52.1. Um, spent a lot of time playing at one point, but yeah. Okay, so we want to look at what the last time a game was played. Um, and see what it is that we project this to change the rating to. And then actually change it. Well, actually, um, this display also needs to be changed. That's the other piece of the puzzle. This should show not what's the value in the database, but what's the aged value. Oh, jeez. Can never catch a break. because I'm incorrect, um, yet again. So I've correctly, I think I've correctly implemented the Glico rating deviation calculation. But what this means is that if I go to my profile, um, or more importantly, if I go to the AI's profile, because I know this AI has not played many games lately, where it says 52.1, this is wrong. This needs to say the actual rating deviation that's aged. Um, so let's open up another shell. So we've already consumed that shell. It's just running leech us um, in the background. Um, wait. Um, so we'll get shell number two out here. It's going to be our active tab. Um, click o.pdf. We've got the formula right by now. We understand the theory. AI level 1 showing the wrong rating, um, so that's where we need to go next. Um, control tab full screen, go back. So we're going to um, rep for uh, rating deviation. Hopefully find it in here somewhere. Um, okay, uh, maybe it's not under modules, maybe it's under UI or under app. I'm not going to be so fortunate, am I? It's not under UI, it's not under app. Um, 
reading deviation colon is maybe what I need to be looking for. Um, this makes no sense. Oh, I'm sorry. It's because I'm filtering by scale of files, and the UI doesn't have that. Uh, let's search inside app for that expression, or inside UI. <sighs> it's got to be here somewhere. And then when I can figure out where's the context, I can go back to what generates this and um, fix what generates this to show the aged version of it. Okay, forget that. Grep WR rating under modules. And just look at scale of files. Um, so we find, and I piped this to more because there are too many matches. So there's update ratings, which uses the rating calculator and all that, but I don't know. I should commit what I have thus far. Um, in diff cached. Um, so we got math power and, or abs pow and square root and date time and days are all imported. We're using all of those, we added comments, git commit, fix, um, rating, deviation, aging, or, or not even fix, implement, lico to rating, deviation, aging, during uh, calculation. Push origin glico deviation. It's not ready to PR just yet, but um, at least this much works, I think, if we play a rated game. Which we're not doing at the moment because we still need to get this working to be able to display that calculated value or the aged value. But honestly, um, the rabbit hole is just like infinitely deep, and I don't know. I'm proud enough to have implemented the calculation correctly in only two and a half hours. Um, I think before I take this to the next logical step, I'm going to reach out to other developers, have them maybe under the guise of telling them, please code review this. But really, my hidden agenda is, can you guys please implement the rest of this? Because, man, I don't want to track down everywhere that we're using ratings and make sure that every one of those now uses the aged version of the rating. I can do it, but what's the point? Uh, I mean, ultimately, somebody's got to do it. But what's the point in having me do it? Because I don't know the code base that well. Yes, I know Glico. I know how to implement that crazy formula. I did that all right as far as I can see. But as far as touching the entire code base, do you really want me doing that? Especially when there's people who are familiar with the code base and where are all the points that you'd need to touch. I started this all on a faulty assumption that the only place I'd have to touch was the same place where we're doing the volatility calculation. And I now see that, no, that was wrong. That was a good starting point, but um, this is still displaying the wrong RD value. So, um, progress is made. We're successfully aging once we play a game. Uh, we see that this certainly aged a lot. Um, this is with my initial implementation. This jumped all the way up to 346, which is pretty badly wrong. Um, I guess one thing I could test is that if I play against AI level 1, that this actually does decrease back down. I guess since I'm finding myself in this situation. 
Let's log in as AI level one, play a rematch, or two or three, and see like is at least this calculation reasonable? Um, so let's go challenge AI level one. Let's get our rematch in. Okay. Whoops, wrong window. Wait. Yeah, okay, I've got multiple windows open. I am officially boosting. Nope, I don't need the OBS window, just this one. There we go. Plus 61. Uh, but more importantly, we should see that this rating deviation is lower than 346 now. Yeah, okay, so this does decrease. Um, it's not like I completely busted the rating formula. Cool. Good to see that we're in a better condition than we were in earlier. Um, I'm half tempted to just push or PR what I've got and tell them, you know, you guys want to fix 